good evening. Hundreds of children were forced to leave their school in Hampshire today after a chemical scare. 25 firefighters were called to Warblington School in Havant this morning after staff and pupils began to feel unwell. Mary Stanley has our report. Specialist teams from across Hampshire were called to Warblington School when pupils reported a strong smell of ammonia. Among them, police hazmat officers, a hazardous response unit from South Central Ambulance and detection and monitoring teams from Winchester. Three members of staff and a pupil were taken to hospital for checks after reporting irritation. With all hazardous material incidents, especially one where there's a lot of people around, we take it very seriously. Uh, indications at this moment in time it is a very minor incident, but we have sent a number of resources in case it had escalated. But thankfully, it's been contained. And I'd like to stress that none of the children in the classrooms were affected at all by this incident. The 700 pupils at the school were evacuated to the hall, furthest away from the incident in the maths and science block. All the students were sat calmly in lines in the sports hall. At some stage during the morning we allowed them to go onto the multi-use games area or in the sports hall. All very controlled, very calm. Um, so yeah, really proud of the staff and the students. All the boilers here are now being checked as a matter of precaution, leaving the school without any heating or cooking equipment. So all the pupils who can are being sent home for the afternoon. An investigation by police and fire crews found no source of the smell, which was said to have dissipated. Crews ventilated the area and declared it safe. Teachers will be relieved to have normal lessons tomorrow. Mary Stanley, ITV News, Havant. Detectives investigating the disappearance of a woman from Dorset have confirmed they have found human remains. Isabel Munro was last seen in Christchurch in April. Police say her remains were discovered in Woodland in Long Meadow in Barton-on-Sea. A large section of Woodland remains cordoned off this evening. Officers are treating her death as unexplained. The M27 had to be closed this afternoon after a crash involving three cars. The collision happened westbound at Junction 12. Two people were taken to hospital, one suffering with head injuries. The Southern Rail dispute is far from being resolved. Tonight, GTR, who runs Southern Trains, say they have started legal proceedings at the High Court in a bid to stop drivers who are members of ASLEF going out on strike this month and next. The union says it will continue to fight for passenger safety. And today, the RMT, who represents the guards, called off its strike on Christmas Eve, instead announcing a 48-hour stoppage from the 19th of December. The union's walkouts from the 6th to the 8th of December and the 31st of December to the 2nd of January are unchanged. All the dates can be found on our website. Just go to itv.com forward slash Meridian. Police forces have chosen today, the 1st of December, to launch their drink and drug driving campaign. Anyone caught could face a driving ban, a £5,000 fine or jail. In Dorset, more officers have been trained to test motorists for drugs as well as alcohol. We've, we've been saying for a number of years, don't drink and drive because of the effects that it will have on you. But we're trying to say, what about the effects it will have on other people, on your family, on your loved ones? So the people you're buying a present for today, if you're involved in a crash, you could kill yourself, you could kill someone else. If you don't worry about your own safety, if you don't worry about going to prison, then think about the family that you're going to leave behind. Think about those that you're going to, whose lives you're going to destroy and devastate by having that drink or by taking drugs. Some vehicles driving into Southampton could be charged £200 a day in drastic measures to cut pollution. The city is one of the most polluted in the country and scientists say it's having a devastating effect on the health of people who live there. With a special report, here's Kerry Swain. Road transport causes 70% of Southampton's air pollution diesel vehicles more polluting than petrol, generating significantly higher levels of nitrogen dioxide and what's called particulate matter. Long-term exposure estimated to cause 200 early deaths in the city every year. This up here collects all the particles that would settle in your nose, this one collects all the particles that would settle in your lungs and this one the particles which might actually get into your blood supply. Researchers at the University of Southampton are collecting particles and studying their effect on cells in the body. We see links between people who live in big cities and rates of asthma, rates of heart disease, newborn baby weight being low. And even recently there's been links to diabetes and Alzheimer's disease and these particles have been found in people's brains. 
You might feel protected inside your car, but the air I'm breathing in here is more polluted than outside in this slow-moving traffic. In fact, drivers are exposed to up to 15 times more pollution than walkers and cyclists on busy city streets. A monitoring station measuring emissions. Southampton named by the World Health Organization as one of the worst cities in the country for breaching air pollution safety levels. Children at Sholing Junior School have already persuaded their parents to leave cars at home. A 23% increase in the number of pupils walking, cycling and scooting earned the school a national award for sustainable travel. There's too much pollution in the air and it's really bad and it can make lots of people unwell. My sister's got quite a mild asthma but I still get very worried sometimes because she has breathing problems at night. If you're driving, just... Um, convince your parents to walk. Private diesel cars will be exempt when Southampton becomes a clean air zone in 2019, but the most polluting commercial vehicles will pay a penalty charge. We'd anticipate that HGVs would be charged something like 100 to 200 pounds a day in order to enter the zone. Some of our members are incredibly worried about this and they fear that they could be forced out of business if these regulations come into force. If we need to change, then we need government support to help us do that. We could make cars without no smoke, turn it all around. It's not a joke. Ten-year-old Olivia McConey's rap won top prize in Southampton City Council's Solutions to Pollution competition. Raising awareness is part of the council's new clean air strategy. Some of our clean air measures aren't about turning away things like cruise ships, they aren't about turning away hauliers into the city. It's about working with them to achieve practical measures. They actually get savings as well, so as they upgrade their fleet, they'll have fuel savings which they can then bank. I don't think it's fair, and you've heard some of the children uh, and their passion around the issue, that we're expecting residents to breathe in um, these emissions from these vehicles because companies aren't willing to invest in their fleet. The council's first electric delivery van Large diesel vehicles like refuse trucks cannot yet be powered by electricity. But cruise ships which leave diesel engines running while in port could plug into Maine's electricity if the facility was there. The port says feasibility work into providing shore power for berthed vessels is now taking place. Improving air quality won't be cheap. The Blue Star Bus Company has spent almost £7 million replacing old high-emission buses with the latest clean engines. But the health cost of Southampton's polluted air is put at £50 million. Up to now, it's not been fully realised that breathing it in is worse than passive smoking. We have a Clean Indoor Air Act, haven't we, where you can't smoke in pubs and restaurants, and we all accept that because of people's health. But now we have to get used to the idea that outdoors can be just as bad. Southampton City Council says reducing pollution levels and improving air quality is a priority. It has promised decisive action, but says everyone in the city has a role to play. Kerry Swain, ITV News. One in every 69 people will be homeless this Christmas in Brighton. That's according to figures released today by Shelter. The city has the worst rate for homelessness outside London. The charity says high rents, a lack of affordable homes and cuts to welfare support are adding to the problem. Southampton's clock tower at the Civic Centre has turned red tonight to mark World AIDS Day. It comes as a survey by leading HIV charity, the Terence Higgins Trust, has said public perceptions about AIDS are the same as in the 80s. Well, let's take a look at the weather now with all the details tonight. Here's Simon. From sleet to the slopes, driving through Europe, Euro Tunnel the Shuttle sponsors ITV Meridian Weather. Good evening. Well, you might not want to risk giving the bed socks the night off tonight, but it's not quite as cold as it was last night. Minus 7.2 last night for tonight. Well, for many of us, it'll stay above freezing. But the downside is there's more cloud around and that will make for a slightly greyer day tomorrow. The general plan stays the same, though. The jet stream sitting way to the north of us. We've got the cool air trapped underneath it. But because of that cloud blanket, we're not quite as cool as it has been. That said, it's towards the southeast that we've still got 
got the clearest skies. And here we've got temperatures down into the minuses with some frost and also the risk of some patchy fog developing as well. Further to the north and to the east, that's where we've got the cloud. Here, temperatures in the pluses for the first time in a few nights. Three, four degrees, positively balmy for some of us. But it will be a bit of a grey start tomorrow. Plenty of cloud to wake up to as we head through Friday. There will be a few bright or sunny spells developing, but generally it's a more overcast story. The winds will stay light and the temperatures are going in the right direction. Seven, eight degrees tomorrow, but still feeling quite cool if you're outside. And then for the weekend, still a bit cloudy on Saturday. Plenty of sunshine on Sunday. Eurotunnel The Shuttle sponsors ITV Meridian Weather. Our political programme, The Last Word, is next. We're back during Good Morning Britain from 6 o'clock tomorrow morning. But from the late team, thank you for watching. See you tomorrow. Have a great evening. Bye-bye.